This morning what I'm going to do is give your faith a booster shot this morning. That's, that's my goal here. Um, I told you at the beginning of the year that we were going to talk a lot about plugging into this blessing and we were going to preach on this blessing in faith all year. And, and we've come down to a place here where um, I'm noticing that, that, that our faith needs a booster shot. Because there's a lot of people, although you're trying to fight, your faith just needs a little encouraging. And so I want to give your faith some encouragement this morning and just, just get into the word of God and, and stir you back up in this area. Because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It didn't say faith came. It said faith comes. And that is a continuation word. It continues to come. Not only does it come, it's strengthened and is developed also through hearing and hearing the word and then using the word that you hear, you've, you've, you've heard and learned. So let's start off here, and I'm going to read a couple of opening introductory scriptures here. First in, uh, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Because like I said at the beginning of this year, my objective is for everybody in here to win at everything you do. Everything that God calls you to do, you are supposed to win. Amen? First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has confessed a good confession before many witnesses. So that tells you right there that you are going to, you, that you are in the in a fight, and the fight that you're in is the fight of faith. But it says that if you're intending on laying hold of eternal life or the God kind of life, you're going to have to right, fight this faith, this this fight rather of faith. But then it says that it gives you an encouraging word. It says you've been called to this fight. If God calls you to fight this fight, then God already knows the outcome of the fight. You're supposed to win. And then you do your winning through your confessions of faith, yeah. your good confessions of faith. So we're in a fight. We're not fighting with the devil. We're not fighting with people. We are fighting the fight of faith. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, look also at Ephesians chapter 6. Like I said, I had a couple of introductory scriptures, and then we're going to head on over to where we need to be. And in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, now I want to read this from my Amplified Bible. Therefore, put on God's complete armor, that you might be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day. And having done all the crisis demands to stand, stand firmly in your place. So it says here, you got to put on something, which is the armor of God, and by putting it on, it gives you the ability to resist and to stand your ground on the evil day. What do you mean on the evil day? The evil day would be any day that you are attacked. Yeah. Any day that Satan is coming against your mind. Any day that anything that's trying to happen in your life that's not going in the direction that God said it's supposed to be going. It says that you're supposed to be able to resist and stand your ground. Now, how are you going to do that? We're going to do it fighting the good fight of faith. And it says, having done all to stand, stand. It didn't say having done all to stand, give up. Having done all to stand, quit. 
having done all to stand, uh, to stand wine and, and beg God, it says having done all the standing that you think you can do, you still can stand more. You're not a quitter. Faith never quits. Faith never takes no for an answer. Faith never backs up from a challenge. Having done all to stand, God expects to find you standing. And faith people stand. Faith people don't quit. I don't care what Satan's throwing at you, faith people don't back up. Because faith people believe the word of God. And if God says, I got the victory, if the Bible says they're giving thanks unto the Father who always causes me to triumph, then that is the truth. Faith doesn't quit. Faith doesn't back up. Faith doesn't wonder. Faith doesn't doubt. Faith says, I have received everything that God promised me. It's mine. And, I'm, and I have it. But then it puts this word in here. Having done all that the crisis demands. There are things that the crisis will demand you do. Now we're going to look at this today. Because a lot of you in here are fighting a fight right now. There are challenges that are before you. Some of them may be health issues. Some of them may be relationship issues. Some of them may be financial issues. Some of them may be encouragement issues. But whatever the issue is, it's a challenge. And the Bible says that you're just having done all that the crisis demands. You're supposed to be standing. So standing how? Standing in faith. So we're going to look at what do I need to be doing to be standing firm in my faith? Because you're not going to get the victory backing up. You're not going to get the victory giving up. You're going to get the victory moving forward and moving up in God. All right? So I need for you to get your, your, your Bibles and get your notes and whatever because this is a booster shot this morning. And, and, and our faith needs it. So turn with me to, to the foundational teaching about faith in Mark chapter 11. This is the foundational teaching that, that, that Jesus outlined for us concerning the operation of our faith. And you need to refer to it often. When you're noticing that you're getting weak in the area of your believing, you should refer to this section of scripture and stir yourself up again. When Satan starts telling you it's not going to work, you want to refer to this section of scriptures and stir yourself up again. Now let's look at it. So Jesus is teaching here, and we're going to look at verse 22. It says, Jesus answering them, and his answer was, have faith in God. Now, I'm going to stop there for, for a moment. Have faith in God. Everything is either won or lost with that statement. Have faith in God. Or in other words, Believe God. Don't believe your circumstance. Don't believe what people say. Don't believe how you feel. Don't believe what you think. Believe God. Have faith in God. Well, Pastor, how, what, am I, what am I supposed to do now? I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my bills. Have faith in God. Well, pastor, it just don't seem like I'm getting my healing this time. Have faith in God. 
Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to get this thing fixed. It just looks like there's just no way out. Have faith in God. That is the answer to any challenge that's going to come up before you. Have faith in God. So the question is, where is your faith? Is your faith more in the circumstance ability to do what it's saying? Is your faith more in I'm not going to be able to pay my bills? Is your faith more in I'm not going to get my healing this time? Is your faith in whatever the challenge is or is your faith in God? Yeah. Because wherever your faith is, that's what you're going to get. And if your faith's in the, in, the, in the area of I just don't think I'm going to be able to do it this time, then guess what you're going to receive? Not being able to do it this time because that's what you believe. But Jesus said, I, and here's the deal. It doesn't matter what the issue is. He didn't say have faith in God for some things. No, the answer to everything is have faith in God. I don't care what you're looking at. So the first thing I'm going to say when the crisis appears is I have faith in God. I believe God. Now you can't say you believe God and not believe his word. It's impossible. I cannot say out of one side of my mouth I, I have faith in you and then turn around and say I don't believe anything you say. It's going to be either or. Because for me to believe that you can do what you say you have to do, I have to, first of all, receive and believe the words. Because it's the words that is, that is, that is communicating to me what you can do. Have faith in God. Now, why is this important? Now, now put your marker there, because we're going to keep referring back to this section of scriptures this morning. And my job this morning is to stir up your faith. Numbers chapter 23. Let's, let's, let's look there. The 23rd chapters of Numbers. I guess if I can get my Bible to turn to numbers, we'd be okay. All right. <clears throat> Look at verse 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it or has he spoken and shall not make it good? Notice God is not a man that he should lie. Now I want to look at this. For some reason here, my, my tablet ain't doing what it's supposed to do. It's not cooperating. All right, plan B. It's saying it's connected, but it won't let me get on the internet here. Oh, well, maybe here we go. All right, now watch this. Let me pull this up this morning. Because I want to read this verse of scripture from a couple of other places. So that you can get the idea of, of, of what he's saying here, to have faith in God. And that God is not a man that, 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 he, that he should lie. So now look at this verse, listen to this verse of scripture here from, I'm going read it from several places. I want to look at, read it from God's word. 
uh, translation here. Give me a second. Let me get to where I need to get to. We got time. We ain't going anywhere. It says, God is not like people. He tells no lies. See, people are lied to you. But it says, God is not like people. He tells no lies. He is not like humans. He doesn't change his mind. Once God spoke something, it is that way forever. He says he don't change his mind. When he says something, he does it. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. Now, I want to let that, let, let that ring in your, in your thinking for a moment. Have faith in God. Why? Because God is not a man. God is not human. He doesn't lie like people do. See, the problem that some of you have this morning is that you're, you're trying to bring God down on the level that, every, that you got everybody else on. Because people have promised you things in the past and didn't keep their, their word on it. And, 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 and people have told you they were going to do things and, and, and lied to you. And so now when God shows up and starts talking to you, you have a tendency to put him in that same boat. But I'm here to tell you this morning, the Bible says God's not like human beings. He does not lie. And if he promised you, something he doesn't change his mind he's going to make it good he ain't a liar let's also look at it from the, the this this uh, NIV translation the international readers version rather said God isn't a mere man he can't lie it didn't say he what he said he can't if God says something, it is that way. Whatever he says, things conform to his word. They should yours too. So God is not a human. <clears throat> I mean, where's, where am I at here? All right, uh, God is not a mere man. He can't lie. He isn't a human being. He doesn't need to change his mind. He speaks and then he acts. He makes a promise and then he keeps it. Amen. To me, it's saying God's word is a guarantee. If I can find where he promised it to me, it's a guarantee as good as mine. And if I say I have faith in God, then whatever he's promised me, having done all to stand, I will be found standing on that promise. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what it feels like. If he promised it to me, I will not be moved off of that word. You're going to have to come to that. Have faith in God. Now, turn with me to Titus chapter 1. Like I said, I'm stirring your faith up this morning. And I can tell you right now that the presence of the Lord is in this room. I know we're on the right subject. You know, God is, God is fed up, fed up with Satan afflicting his people. God is ready and is looking for a person or, or, or people that will stand their ground and let God show himself strong through them. Amen. The devil is not more powerful than God. Amen. He's already been defeated. And he's not more powerful than you. Notice what it says here in Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hopes, in hope of eternal life. Where, 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 where is your hope? In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world begun. God promised eternal life. Now, eternal life doesn't mean living forever. 
See, we've been trying to make that word mean mean forever. It can't mean mean uh, live forever because the unsaved are going to live forever. A spirit can't die. So whether you're alive in heaven or alive in hell, you're going to live forever. So obviously eternal life couldn't mean God promised us eternal life, I mean living forever. Because if you're not born again and you die, you're going to live forever in the lake of fire. So obviously there's another meaning. The meaning of eternal life is living the God life. Living life the way God arranged for you to live as if you were still in the Garden of Eden. Here is the, here's, here's Jesus' idea of it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in this earth just like it is in heaven. In other words, you and I are supposed to be living like heaven now. Amen. Not when you get there, now. Amen. That's God's idea. And he said he promised it before he even said, let there be light. This was the will and mind and ideal of God. Verse 3 says, but, but has in due time manifested his word or manifested the promise. How? Through preaching. Through preaching. Somebody got to preach this to you. And you got to hear it more than once. This is why you're getting a booster shot this morning. Your hope should be always in. I refuse to live any other way than the way God designed for me to live. Refuse it. If it didn't come from the plan of God, I resist it. And having done all to stand, stand, stand what? Resisting anything else that did not come from God. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. He's not a man that he should lie. This is what having faith in God. This is why I have faith in God. I don't care if I die. I will die saying God he is a healer. But I promise you this. If you keep saying that long enough, you're not going to die. Because I know the word says life and death in the power of my tongue. And with long life shall he satisfy me. Amen. Have faith in God. Hebrews chapter 6. See, we gotta, you got you to stir yourself up. And I get it. You know, you're taking all these blows and things are just coming at you and they're just bombarding you and you're getting hit from all different directions. I get it. But all that is designed to weaken you. Yeah. It is designed to weaken you until you drop your shield of faith. And here's how you know when you've dropped your shield of faith. All of the thoughts of Satan get in. It's not working gets in. Nobody loves me gets in. I don't know if this is ever going to work gets in. God, where are you gets in. What are those called? Fiery darts. Hitting your consciousness, your mind. But the Bible says your shield of faith quenches that. So if your faith, shield of faith isn't up and it's dropped, then all those thoughts are getting in. That tells you when you're thinking that way, that tells you you need to go stir yourself back up on God is not a liar. And I need to regain or restrict in my faith in God and his word. Now, Hebrews chapter 6, I want to read this from my Amplified Bible, verse 13. For when God made his promise to Abraham, he swore by himself, saying, since I have no one greater to swear by, blessing I will certainly bless you, and in multiplying, I will multiply you. Now, what I want you to see there is this. God swore this. He didn't just promise it. He swore it in blood. So that tells me, now you think about it for a minute. When you're trying to convince somebody of something, and you're making, you're swearing, I man, I promise you. 
But we've, we've, there used to be a time in, uh, in the history of the world to where if, if, if we shook hands, that's all was needed. If I shook my hand and agreed to something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay down my life before I violate that. That used to be the case. Then we had to move from that because people began to be liars. And we had to move, now you got to sign your contract. You know, I was thinking about something Quattro and I was watching last night. We were watching the movie that they made about uh, uh, how McDonald's was, 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 was uh, established. And um, these two brothers, McDon these two brothers are the one established out in, uh, out in California. And um, they had some, I mean, they, you know, came with the idea of how to take fast food restaurant and move it to, uh, you know, like it is today where everything is in and out, quick, fast. Uh, and it was like, my, I mean, it, it was amazing how fast it was growing, but, you know, they, they didn't know how to franchise it. So another man came in and uh, had the idea of helping the brothers franchise. And so he went into business with them. As a long story short, he actually stole it from them. And it came down to he, had did, he figured out a way to, uh, to uh, the way he stole the business, the business is basically he undercut them, basically. But anyway, to get to where I'm getting to is this. At the end, where he was getting ready to buy them out, the McDonald brothers said, okay, we'll sell the company to you for, back then it was like one point something million dollars a piece. They both got one something million dollars a piece. But they also wanted to put in the contract that they were going to be able to receive 1% of all royalties that was made. So the guy that was still in the business for him, now watch this. He gave him a million something dollars. But the contract, he had a lie. He, 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 he's, he's a con artist. He had a lie in there. And the lie was this. Well, because of contracts and different things, we're trying to do business right now. And with the 1% deal, we can't really agree to on paper with a signature. But if we, you know, let's shake hands on it and, and it'll be as good as done uh, because I just can't put it on paper right now because it, it would mess up our deals that we're working on. And so as the movie went on, went on, went on, it went off, the, and, the, and the credits was rolling, and they said that, that, that McDonald's, if the man never made good yeah. on a handshake. He lied. And if he had to make good on it, if, if, if he had to make good on it, they were supposed to be receiving $100 million a year off of that 1% royalty today. What am I saying? God's not like that. He didn't just stretch out a hand and shake. He laid down some life and shed some blood to make sure that what he promised you, you would get. It's a guarantee. For anybody to make up their mind that I'm going to believe this contract or believe this covenant that I have with God, if you'll believe it and you'll stand for it and stand on it, you will receive because it's been swore in blood. And if God doesn't do it, he can no longer be God. Have faith in God. Where is your faith this morning? Where is it? Because if you wave in white flags, your faith is not in God. If you're on the verge of quitting and giving up, your faith is not in God. If all that keeps coming out of your mouth is your problem, your faith is not in God. So it says have faith in God. Now back over to Mark chapter 11. Let's, let's continue to look at this. <clears throat> Jesus teaches here and in this teaching, there are several principles that you and I have to do that are required to say that we are fighting a good fight of faith. The first principle is found into a verse 23. So Jesus says, have faith in God. Then he says this, for verily I say unto you, That whosoever, it didn't say that if the pastor did it, 
if the ministers did it or if only those that, you know, that didn't miss a church service did it or the only people that could do it was a tither. Yeah. It said whosoever. It didn't even say that only the same folks could do it. It said whosoever. Whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. So the first principle <clears throat> in having done all the crisis demands. See, here's what it demands. The first thing that it demands is you have faith in God. The second thing that it demands is you're going to have to speak to something. See, here's what people have been doing. The problem shows up and you start talking to God about the problem. God already knows what the problem is. And he's already given an answer to the problem. Jesus didn't tell you to come pray to God about your problem. You are wasting your time in prayer and all you did was pray about the problem? You wasted your time. It says, whosoever shall say unto the mountain. Your first place is speak to the mountain. Now here's why most people won't do it. Because they don't believe that they have any authority to do any speaking to anything. When you don't forget what the word of God says, that he's giving you power over all the power of the devil. You have the authority of God on the inside of you to command and demand some things in this earth. And it says you speak to the mountain. You use your authority first against whatever's trying to come against you. Speak to it. Now, in order for you to speak to it successfully, you've got to know what the Word of God says about it. So it says, for whosoever shall say unto the mountain. So let's look at that. What, was that. what does that mean? Why do I need to speak to the mountain? Well, 1 Peter answers that for you. And tells you how to do it. First Peter chapter five verse six says, Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So humbling yourself and letting God do the exalting. That simply means I'm not going to try to figure this thing out on my own. I'm not going to use my own natural ability to solve this problem. I'm not going to depend on man to help me out of here. I'm going to have faith in God. Now, how do I humble myself? Casting all of your cares up on him, for he cares for you. So laying there all night long worried about your problem tells me that you haven't humbled yourself. So if you're not an humble person, then you're in pride. So the person that lays and worries is a prideful person. You know why you're a prideful person? Because you assume that you can figure this out on your own and you don't need God. And it just told you here to, if you're going to call yourself an humble individual, you've cast the care over on God. And if I've cast the care on God, I'm not worried about it anymore. Amen. See, people are going to look at you and tell you, well, something's wrong. Well, who do you think you are? You mean to tell me your key is out there and all this stuff's going on? You know all what they're doing and you ain't even worried about it? No. I ain't going to worry about it. I'm not going to let you make me worry about it. I'm not even going to think about it. Why? Because it's being cast over on God whom I have faith in. Now, be sober. Here's why you need to do it. 
Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a Roman lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. The devil is looking for someone that he can jump on and rip apart. Rip apart how? In your mind. Because if he can tear your mind up, your life will follow. When you find an individual, a born again individual whose life is, life is in shambles, you found an individual who Satan has ripped their mind apart to worry. Whom resist? Notice, he says, resist him. Now, if God told you to resist the devil, then he obviously thinks you can do it. Yeah. Think about that. God would never tell you and I to do something that we couldn't do. So if he says, you resist him, then God knows that the ability to resist Satan is present. The ability to resist sickness and disease is present. Let's, let's make it plain. The ability to resist financial pressures is, is, is available to you. You can do it. The ability to resist drugs, alcohol, I don't care what it is. If God says you resist it, then the ability to resist it is present. If you will have faith in God. Says you resist him. How? Standing firm in your faith. We right back, right back to say, hey, and having done all to stand, stand. Anchor your feet in the ground and you tell the devil, I am not backing up. And you're not gonna make me. Come on, we know about this. Now, all of you in here may not have been fighters, but if you was a scrapper when you was in school, hey, you told that individual, hey, take one more step over here, because I ain't backing up. And even if you wasn't a fighter, if they pushed you enough, and it's the quiet ones you better pay attention to. It's the ones don't say a lot. Then everybody think you push them around. You push one time too many, you're going to find out something. But God is saying resist. So if God says resist, he has confidence in your ability to resist. Why? Because he knows what's in you and who's in you. He said resist. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. Resist. Resist the temptation to quit. Because all temptation is pressure. Resist the pressure to quit. Resist the pressure to say I'll never be healed. Resist the pressure to say I, I just don't know how I'm ever going to get out of debt. Resist the pressure to let that come out your mouth. Resist it and say what God said about it. Yeah. I don't care what you think and how you feel. You always should be found fighting the good fight of faith. Jesus said speak to that mountain. Resist it with the word of God. Now, what did it say in, Mark, in, 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 in Matthew chapter 4? Let's look there. Now, this is the story about Jesus when he was in temptation out in, out in the desert. And I'm willing to believe this. I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to move on. I don't think anyone in this room has had Satan personally show up and, 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 and test you. You, we, 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 you dealing with the little demons and devils, the little, the little the imps. The, 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 the man of darkness himself showed up to, talk, to deal with Jesus. So that means he had to deal with the whole thing. And notice what Satan came after him with. Verse 3, and when the tempter came, so obviously the tempter is not God. So don't you ever say again that God is putting this on you to teach you something. God does not tempt anybody. The Bible calls the tempter Satan. 
And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, you know, cast the maternities, these, these stones in the bread. You hungry, Jesus? Been out here fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Go on, turn these, uh, these stones into some bread and eat. What did Jesus do? Now, now listen to it. He didn't just start quoting a bunch of stuff. He spoke to the mountain. He said to it, thus it is written. Do you know what's written? See, well, he's, he's paying his right. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I'm here. Glory to God, I'm here. Well, wait just one second. That's true. But let's speak to the mountain first. Th hey, this is for your benefit, Satan. Thus it is written. Man don't have to live by bread alone. But by every word to proceed out of the mouth of God. What was he doing? I'm sp he's speaking to his mountain. He's speaking to the thing that's putting pressure on him. And he's telling the thing, no. He's resisting. Then you read the next thing. It says, all right. It said, then the, then the tempter took him up on top of the, the, the put him up on, on top of a church, showed him all of the wealth of the world in a moment of time, and said, all right, if you just bow down before me, nobody has to know, just a quick bow. I give you all this. That's pressure. Why is that pressure? Because Satan was trying to get Jesus to take it from him instead of uh, trying to, well, Satan was trying to offer it. Where, you know, so that's pressure because Jesus wasn't going to have to go through all what he had to go through to get it. He could just bow down and get it. And would nobody know about it? But what did, what did Jesus do? Once again, what did he say? To that pressure. Now, let's, let's keep it in context here because if you, it, cause he, he said to the devil, no, 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 no. He spoke to the pressure. What you need to understand is there wasn't no little demon with a pitchfork down there talking to Jesus and they were looking at each other. He was dealing with the same stuff you and I deal with. Suggestions of the mind. So what did the devil do? Showed him a vision of all the stuff that he could get. And what did Jesus do? He resisted the pressure. How? Thus it is written. Yes. Then the devil came out of the last time. Well, okay, since we like to use scripture, <laughs> let me go on and just hit you with this Psalm 91. Go on and jump on down there. Didn't the word say that he will bear you up, that the angels will bear you up in their hands and you won't even have to dash your foot against the stone? That was pressure. And what did Jesus do again? Thus it is written. He put the word on him. So how am I going to speak to my mountain? How are you going to speak to your mountain? How do you deal with the pressure to come against your mind? You find the scripture that promised you the answer and you say, hey, sickness, thus it is written. Hey, financial issues, thus it says, hey, it is written. You find it, and you speak to the problem. You put the word on it. Now, God said do that before you even start talking to him about anything. Talk to your problem first. Don't come and get me to talk to your problem. No, you talk to your problem because it's your problem. Tell it where to go. You getting out of here. Pain in your body. Pain. The word of God says this, and you can't stay here. You got to go. Debt, the word of God says this about you. You cannot stay here. You got to go. You are leaving here. Speak to it. Stop waving your little white flags. Stop getting in the bed, pulling the head on, cover over your head. Stop putting your head in the sand trying to apply like it don't exist. It's there. And it's going to still be there when you pull your hand from under the cover and it'll still be there. You better talk to it. So it says that the first thing that you need to do is speak to your mountains. Talk to the problem. 
and quit asking God to do your talking for you. He's equipped you to do it. You're wasting your time praying and asking, oh, Father Jesus, Lord, somebody please help me fix this. That's a waste of prayer. You wasted your time. Come on, you know I'm not lying. How many of you here know? How many of you don't pray that prayer and nothing happened? So you know I'm not lying. You know why nothing happened? Because it wasn't how you're supposed to do it. If you stick the wrong card in the ATM machine, guess what's going to happen? Nothing. This is why I said when you, when you start seeing stuff, hey, something's going on with my faith here, you go back to Jesus' teaching. You know, you put your book up. Well, let me get out my 17 steps to faith operations and let me go over here and look at 25 steps video for, for faith. No, no, put all that stuff away. Because I don't need what man thought about it. I need to go back to the book. What did Jesus say? Because that works. So let's go back and let's, let's continue to look. We're pushing forward. Mark chapter 11. Let's go back to it. When you start thinking about faith and operation of faith, this is where you land. So it says, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. So you, you spoke to it, as shall not doubt in his heart. But let's deal with that, as shall not doubt in his heart. Because a lot of God's people make the mistake of thinking that because you have a doubtful thought in your mind, that you've violated the word of God. It didn't say, as shall not doubt in your mind. It said in your heart. Amen. Let me tell you something. Your mind can go 15,000 different directions and mean nothing until you receive the thoughts. Just because your mind tells you something don't mean you have to agree. Here, the old saying is, you may not be able to stop the birds from flying over the top of your head, but you sure can do something about them stopping and building a nest there. Thoughts will come and go. The Bible told you what to do with a thought. Cast it down and keep it moving. And so, so just because I had a doubt thought, if I'm using my faith and I'm believing God and I'm quoting things and all of a sudden I find a thought slip in there, well, it ain't going to work this time. Oh, I'm not going to get nervous and be like, well, I guess I must not be in faith. No, I'm in faith. That's that demon trying to get you out of faith. So what I'm going to do is say, you guess what? You know what? Satan, you right. It's not going to work this time. You know what? Because it's already worked. Yeah. I ain't on. It's not going to work this time. I'm on. It's already working. Yeah, yeah see, you behind. Shut up. Talk to it. Cast that thought down. You see, see, the thought will get into your heart if you let it sit there long enough. Cast that thing down. I'm healed. And then the pain hits you and it does. See, I told you you wasn't healed. Shut up. Yes, I am. I'm already healed. I was healed before I even got sick. Shut up. Nobody listening to you? Just tell me, shut up. You ain't got to spend a bunch of time Satan in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you by the name of the Father and in the name of the Son. I ain't got to go through all that. Just shut up. I'm not listening to you. Shut up. So it said, it shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you say will come to pass. So the first thing that you do is have faith in God. The second thing was speak to your mount, mountain. After I spoke to my mountain, the next thing is I'm going to declare what I want. What's going to come out of my mouth now is what I want. But what most, thing, most people was coming out of their mouth is what they don't want. And that's why you keep getting what you don't want. You keep saying you're sick. Well, wait just one second. Now, do you want to be sick? Because if you keep saying, I'm sick, then what, you do, what you're doing is calling sickness. If you want to get well, then you better start saying, no, I'm well. Well, Pastor, I, I don't feel well. I don't look well. The doctor says I'm not. I don't care what they said. The Bible says, I don't walk by sight. 
that's dealing with how I feel, see, to hear, taste, and touch the sense realm. I don't care what I feel like. I what I'm going to do is say what I want. Because if I start saying what I want, it'll change how I, what I feel like. Amen. Amen. You better start declaring with what you want. See, we're talking about having done all that the crisis demands. This is what the crisis is demanding. This is what problems are screaming for in your life. Do you have an answer for me? Amen. Now, Job chapter 22. Now, now listen to this. See, you gotta, gotta, you gotta get. Hey, hey, this book wasn't given to you for you to carry on Sunday, or for you to set up on your coffee table so when people come over they know. Oh, you must be a religious person. Yeah. No, 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 no. This book was given to you to win. Amen. It is a book of victory. It will teach you how to win at the games of life, all of them, and it works. You are, see, you've come too late to convince me that it don't work. I know it worked. I don't prove it worked. And I'm still proving it works today. So you're going to have to make up your mind. That's why I started off. That's why Jesus started off. The first thing Jesus says, have faith in God. Because if you're not going to have faith in God, then you can go and chalk it up. And the rest of it is over with. You're done. Now notice what it says here in Job chapter 22. Verse 28, it says, Thou shalt also decree a thing. How does one decree anything? You got to say something, don't you? You got to say what you want. A decree is what you want. It says that thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon your ways. Now, let's, 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 let's plug that in here, and let's look at a few um, other translations of that particular verse of Scripture. And I want to look at it in, where are we going here? couple of different places. Let me get it to pull up here. And I want to look at it from, uh, come on, tablet, let's, let's move a little quicker. <clears throat> the English Standard Version says this. You will decide on a matter, and it will be established for you, and light will shine upon your ways. So you should decree a thing or decide on a matter. You got to decide on what you want. And see, the problem is you keep deciding on the side of the problem. And that's what you keep having established for you. See, the decision wasn't God's, and the decision wasn't the devil's. It's yours. I can decide to, de to, to, to stand with God and say that, rather than siding with the problem and saying it. Also, let's look at the Message Bible for that verse of Scripture. It says it this way. You'll decide what you want, and it'll happen. Your life will be bathed in light. So you'll decide on what you want and it will happen. Yeah. Why? Because God's word can't lie. If I decide to speak God's word, it's already been established. It surely will come to pass. If I will stand and haven't done all the stands to stand, keep standing and not wave the white flag. Amen. What am I trying to get you to understand this morning, folks? You can't quit. <laughs> quit can't. Fa hey, failure is not 
an option. Quit is not acceptable. Fix your mind. Hey, who in here, hey, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Then, why did you do it? Did you do it because somebody made you? Because if you did it because somebody made you, I'm getting ready to shake your world up this morning. I know you won't agree with me. You didn't do anything. I, and, and your salvation is questionable. Ah, Pastor, you, you, you're going too far. No, no, I'm not. The Bible says if you believe it in your heart. If I made you do it, you don't believe nothing in your heart. So that means your salvation is questionable. But for all the rest of us up in here that did it because, hey, we were tired of where we were. I don't have enough of this. It got to be something more in life than what I'm seeing. So you made a decision to believe something and you accepted what you made a decision to believe and you got it. Now, why can't you do the same thing with everything else? We got saved because we wanted something different. Then why do you get over here and I want something different still acting the same way you acted before you got saved? Obviously, there has to be a shift if you're going to see something different. Now, now, now look at Isaiah chapter 65. What do you want? Did you decree it? Or are you still sitting there whining, oh Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody loves me. And I can't this and I can't that. And, and, and that's why you stuck. That's exactly why you stuck. Because that's not what the word told you to do. Find me one scripture in the Bible where you found Jesus talking that way. I don't care if it was impossible. Jesus at Lazarus' tomb was physically impossible. The man had been dead for days. His body was decomposing. We're not talking about whatever sickness killed him. We're talking about he's been dead and now his body has begun to decompose. That's impossible. Did Jesus even flinch? He lifted up his voice and what did he do? I thank you, Father. You always hear me. Now move the stone. Impossible. So I don't care if it's possible or impossible. You have a decision to make in this thing. Now, will you believe the impossible and, and agree with it? Or will you believe God? Because my Bible says that all things become possible to him that I believe. That will have faith in God. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 65. And, and, and watch this. <laughs> Chapter 65. Verse 16. From the Amplified Bible says, So it shall be that he who invokes a blessing on himself in the land shall do so by saying. Do you need a blessing in the land? How many in here right now, you got an issue going on in your life and you need the blessing? Decree something. It says that he that invokes the blessing, invokes another way of saying decreeing something. He who shall invoke a blessing upon himself in the land shall do so how? By declaring something, saying. And you're not going to invoke a blessing on yourself, calling yourself sick, calling yourself broke, calling yourself dumb, calling yourself unemployed, calling yourself anything other than what God has called you. If I'm going to invoke the blessing on myself, then I'm going to speak the word of God. So the only way I'm going to be able to do it. Because any other words are invoking the curse. 
Well, what's the, what do you mean? Well, what's, well, what's the curse? The curse is threefold. Spiritual death, the separation from God, sickness and disease, and poverty and debt. Because debt will be lack. That's the curse. Well, the blessing, threefold. Salvation, or, or you could put it this way, uh, 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 being born again deals with the spiritual death, child of God. Jesus provided healing for sickness and disease. And then also he made provisions for you financially. It says God gets pleasure in the prosperity of his people. So if he gets pleasure in the prosperity of his people, then he expects his people to be what? Prosperous. Invoke the blessing upon yourself. How? By saying. By saying. Look, if I can believe that he saved me because he loved me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He did it. He sent Jesus to die because he loved me, and I got saved because he loved me. Then the Bible says, shall he not with him, talking about Jesus, freely also give you all things? Hmm. So when I stop and think about that particular scripture and I say, okay, you loved me enough to save me, then surely you will heal me. Then surely you, you can give me some money. Let me tell you something, folks. And, and, and we're going to pick it up here on next Sunday. But let, 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 let me tell you something. See, this thing comes down to a decision. Satan's always going to have something to say. But you better have something to say back. And you better have some action to go with it. In other words, when the devil tells you, you'll never get out this financial problem. You're always going to be broke. Instead of you believing that, what you ought to do is says, oh, wait just one second. The word says, and then after the word says, then you know the next thing you need to do. And since you decided to tell me that I was never going to get out, I'm going to show some more. Amen. Watch this. See, you never let him back you up. Since you told me I'm going to always be broke, watch me put another couple of hundred in there. Because I'm going to prove to you, you not my boss. Since you told me I'm never going to be well, I'm always going to be too tired and too sick, guess what I'm going to do? I'm getting up out of the bed and I'm going to clean the whole house just because you had something to say. But what you're not going to do is tell me what I can't do. See, when the devil starts telling you what you can't do, what you ought to do is turn around and say, yes, I can. Now watch this. And then do the very opposite of what he said. Quit backing up and quit surrendering. You have some authority. You have some power. You have some strength in you. And you can do exactly what God says you can do. Now win. Win. Shut the devil's mouth. You ain't going to shut his mouth sitting there listening to him and agreeing with him. Stand up and do exactly what he says you couldn't do. You will never get a job. Then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go volunteer somewhere until my job shows up. But what you're not going to have me doing is sitting at home whining and worrying. If I can't get it the way it won't hire me, I'll volunteer. Yeah. See, what am I doing? I'm proving that I'm the winner here. I am not going to uh, assume the position of defeat. Amen. Never. Amen. Never. Never. Do you think that I don't go through this stuff? The devil tells me all the time what's not going to happen. But you know what I tell him? Shut up. You're lying. You're lying. 
Quantrell's believing God for a car right now and, and go glory to God, we got it. I may not know where it is, but I bet you I got one. And I'm going to tell you something else. Every time the devil starts talking to me about I can't get it, it's not going to happen, shut up. You come too late. I put it that van. That was impossible, but there it sits. There it sits. So don't tell me what God can do. There it is right there. I already did it. I've already did it. Every time God says you'll never get out this debt, and this is going to take you out, and this is going to take you over, and now I'm way over here looking back down that road, all oh, that's gone. I've already did it. So don't tell me now that this debt won't fall too. Yeah, it's going. Why? I've already proved the word said. And, and if I hadn't done anything, I still believe it because God is not a man that he shall lie. Amen. I'm not quitting. I refuse to quit. And you can't make me. Amen. That's your choice. Now, what you going to do? What you going to do? Are you going to keep sitting there wondering? Hoping and wishing, or are you going to get up and stake, take your stand of faith and do what the Word of God says? Having done all the crisis demands, you're going to find me still standing here at the end of the day. And at the end, and when it's all said and done, I'm going to come out the winner, and light will be shining on my ways. Because God says so. Now, what you going to do? Now, we're not done. I couldn't get through all of it. But I'm giving you a booster shot in your faith this morning. Because your faith needs it. You need to be stirred. You need to be stirred. How many of you working on something right now? Amen. Then what you going to do? Amen. Let's, let's, let me ask another question. And be honest with yourself. You ain't got to put your head up and be honest with yourself. How many of you guys kind of just don't put your little stuff on the side table because, you know, life just made you put it over there? Pull it back out. Amen. How many of you got your pictures up on your refrigerators and, and got your prayer petitions out there and you, and, you, and you quoting your scriptures and you believe in God? Hey, keep on doing it. Don't stop. What I didn't read in Hebrews chapter 6, it says, And Abraham having endured and waited long, he didn't quit. But it also says, is now enjoying the full of what was promised unto him. You will never enjoy the full of the promise giving up. And by the way, what Abraham was believing for was impossible. It was double impossible. His wife couldn't have kids, and now they both were too old. Did God care? No, because he's God. And he the one that made the womb, and he the one that made the body, and it doesn't matter how old you are. It don't matter. Hey, 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 glory to God. I was reading through the word of God one day. And I found in there where the word of God said for any woman that's barren and want kids, there are kid making scriptures in the Bible. And God says that there will not be any, any barrenness or miscarriages in the land. You can take that scripture and you can tell the devil I'm having a baby and you can touch it. I mean, it's in there. I was like, wow. It's in, it's in uh, one of those Deuteronomy, I think it may be, but it's in there. I was like, wow. God got an answer for everything. It's in there. You got to find it. Search the scriptures day and night, the Bible says. In there, you think you have eternal life. In, in other words, it says, now what you think you have, go find it. And when you find it, now you know more. Now it's more than I think I know. I know. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We give you praise, Father. Your word is right. We have the victory 
In Jesus' name, amen.